You know, it's Susie's drive here at the 17th hole. I want you to watch how she takes the club away from the ball. She gets right here, and you notice that her hands have stayed low. She's sticking the club, her club is moving straight out, and then it moves on up a full turn. Look how high her hands go. Weight is still down on both feet and legs. A bend at the knee, a flex at the knee, so she can move through in that strong position with a real full high follow through, which you must do, these girls must do to get the distance which they do. And that can prove what a 113 pound girl can do to a golf ball. Here's Carol Mann hitting her third shot after her second shot caught the trap in front of the 18th green. Yeah, she'll come up quickly, the club will come quickly and down right underneath the ball, which it did, and she played it beautifully. But this green is rather hard today, hard, and the ball is skidded by about 12 feet, 10 to 12 feet from the hole. Good shot from that deep bunker, though. Carol just missed out winning the championship two years ago by a stroke, and then three years ago, she was the champion in 65. Now Kathy Whitworth, whose second shot went over the green about 12 feet, is measuring it off. Incidentally, the tournament here started on the 4th of July on Thursday, and that was also a big day in the household of Frank Hannigan, who is an assistant director of the USGA. Frank and his wife, Janet, have a new baby girl by the name of Susie. I don't know whether that was prophetic or not, to join their family of a little boy. And so our congratulations go to the Hannigans. Bill, this shot that Kathy has <clears throat> is just exactly like the shot that Tish had a moment ago. Had to use a lofty club, get underneath the ball, and just drop it onto the green, because it's fast going downhill. Firm wrists and hands. And she played it beautifully, but look at that thing take off. Wow. That's... Now, we back to the 17th, and here is Susie Burning hitting her second shot to the par four. And I'm afraid it goes into the trap guarding the 17th green. You know, she uh, was in that same trap yesterday. Did same exactly way. the same thing, too, Brian, because right. she said she used a five wood and hit it just off the toe, and it looked like that one might have done exactly the same. Now Carol Mann lining up the putt. Carol was in the sand trap on her second shot and had the blast out, so this will be for the par four. Should she make it, she'd have a round, a final round of 74 or 294, which would put her in third place so far. Mickey Wright is in with a 68, which is a course record. But yeah, she's eight over par for the championship. We've seen very few Puts made on this hole today. We'll see what she can do with this one. Little downhill, and we'll go about three or four inches to her left. She must stay outside the hole on the right. Only two birdies here. Mickey Wright had one. Marilyn Smith had one. That's today. So Carol will tap in for a 575 for today, 295 for the tournament. She is 11 over par for the championship. And that is eight strokes behind the leader. Carol was just two strokes behind at the start of today's round. Now Kathy Whitworth, who's had rounds of 75, 74, and 73, is three over today. Straight away if she rolls this putt good, Bill. Eight feet straight uphill. R4, she makes it, she's in at 74, or 296. right dying at the hole. And now here is Merle Lindstrom. Merle on the 17th. Getting a nice explosion shot right up to the pin and skittering on past about six feet. But a good shot by Merle Lindstrom. Really looks like he's going to stop right by the hole, Bill. They just kept on rolling on that uh, 17th green. It's 
really fast. That birdie that Mickey Wright made on that hole today was really a great three. Merle is playing out of the Pine Valley Golf Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Here's a good look at it in slow motion, Byron. Yes, watch uh, now how nicely she goes up, keeping a straight left arm. You know, it's both knees are flexed and down so she can stay down to the ball. The shoulder, left shoulder is turned where the, the hands are good position. Now she moves through she, so the club can go under the ball. If her legs had been straight, she couldn't have stayed down to the ball this way. You must stay down to the ball real good uh, on your, uh, out of the bunker, anytime you are. Now here's Susie Maxwell burning from behind her now, coming up to this green. He's a little short. Well, that's one of those that was buried in there quite a little bit, and it's straight downhill from there, and if you get it going, well, you can go clear across the green. She remembers yesterday on the 18th where she had a bunker shot and hit it way over the green when she caught it just a little bit too flush, so she doesn't want to uh, be too careless here. She can afford, actually, to bogey on in and still win the championship by a handsome margin. At this point, you're thinking, Bill, about winning the championship, not whether you make four or five. This putt that she has will uh, is downhill and will break to her left as the ball slows. As the speed dies, the ball will go to the left, but she's been reading these green quite well this week. She's uh, been concentrating well. I heard somebody say today she plays like a little tiger. Well, she couldn't be happier. She and her husband, Dale, have just bought a new home in Lake Tahoe, and they are going to ski in the wintertime, and she plays golf in the summer. What could be more idyllic existence than that? <laughs> plays the ball just inside of her left foot. And then cross position, knees close together so she can keep her body still. Oh, that was a, it, really a tremendous putt. It was a wonderful putt from that position, and uh, it just, of course, as you can see, is virtually assured of a five. You can know that she's going to play short of this water at 18. She gets the bogey five at 17. She hasn't been able to par that one yet, nor has she been able to par 18. But she has done so beautifully on the other holes in the golf course that it hasn't hurt her that much. Well, She's we now did. four over four of the tournament, and the closest one to her is Mickey Wright, who has finished eight over par for the tournament. Murrow would like to save this uh, par here after not a too steady around for today. Another, another down, another downhill, a little to the right. And she makes it. The 1968 United States Women's Open Golf Championship from Roselum Springs Golf Club continues in one moment. There you see the clubhouse of the Most Seldom Springs Golf Club. As the camera moves back, you see the old barn being used as the press headquarters and a delightful place it's been for the last four days. And now as we view the final hole of this championship, the elevated tee at 18 with the crowd surrounding these two final golfers, Merle Lindstrom and Susie Maxwell Burney. Merle Lindstrom to play first, getting her par four at 17. Plays a perfect position shot on the left side of the fairway. And she'll be in great shape to move in on the proper side of this green for her approach. And now the little gal who has captured the hearts of everyone here who has led this tournament from the start. She had a one-stroke lead at the end of the first round, four-stroke lead at the end of two rounds, two-stroke lead at the end of three, and at this point has a four-stroke lead going into the final hole. Incidentally, our thanks to Don Plunkett, the general co-chairman of the tournament, Don Fairman, the general manager and professional here, and Mrs. Harrison Flippin, also the general co-chairman and chairman of the USGA committee. Oh. 
looked like a th uh, maybe a three iron. Uh, yes, I'm sure she played iron. just down the fairway, so she would know that she wouldn't reach the water because that would be the only way that she could possibly lose this championship would be do something foolish like that. She's not about to after playing so great in this tournament. You know, now that you mention that, she said, I can tell you one thing, Bill, that I'm not going to do today. I'm not going to play the 18th as foolishly as I played it yesterday when she took a double bogey six. So we'll see what her strategy is. Looks like it went over to the golfer's right. The boy is running over to market. There you see him. And it may have gone into the rough. It probably did, but they go over there. Uh, then she play over here in front of the water, front of the green from there. And uh, no problem. Try to make five. 